I was on the introduction wing. There was two bearded Muslims on the introduction wing. There was, uh, there was only about 20 people on there, but two of them kept eyeballing me all the time. Eyeball, 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 big beards. So I went to the prison staff. I said, look, guys, I don't give a shit, but these guys, they're eyeballing me. They're staring at me all the time. Something's going to happen. And they was like, all right, Mr. Golden, we'll relay that to the, uh, whoever, the higher up. Uh, the very next day, I'm sitting now. Uh, so if you imagine, I'm sitting there like this. The TV's here. The window's there. My bed's here. I'm sitting on my bed. I'm eat, eating my lunch. I'm watching TV this way. I hear bang. I turn around. Those two bearded Muslims are in my cell. They've closed the door. I go like this to get up. You know, you know, it just happens so quick, yeah, yeah, yeah. like nanoseconds. Yeah. And you just, you, you, you're confused, you're dazed. You don't know what the hell's going on. As soon as I get to, to get up like this, the one who's closest to me is an Iraqi asylum seeker, just right hooked me directly on the nose. Now, you've probably taken a punch on the mm. nose before. It, it disorientates you, mm. massively disorientates. So you've gone from peaceful eating your lunch, turning around, bang. Because he punched me on the nose, it was bleeding all down. I was covered in blood, mm. right? And I, I, I don't know what happened, but I, I, I started to come around to get up, and they basically just opened the door and ran out. They ran back to their cells. So I've staggered out of my cell. This is all on CCTV. I've staggered out of my cell, and I'm looking <coughs> around. There's no prison officers anywhere, none. Like, so I'm staggering along, all on CCTV. Is there cameras on the wing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's cameras everywhere. Some, in Wood Hills, there's not. But there's cameras everywhere. You can see them. They're like, the, you know, the, they've got like the encasing, aren't they? That like indestructible concrete encasing. But, you know, I've staggered along and then one of them see me covered in blood. Went, oh, quick, 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 everyone. Um, and they were locked down. Uh, but then Kent Police came to see me. It was two months later. I was out of prison. Um, I get a phone call. No further action. So, how can it be no further action? They're on video. For heaven's sake, I sustained injuries. Uh, so it, it was a it was a sneak attack by a, a Muslim. You're, you're lucky though. So was that on the induction wing? Well, one of them. Because if it had been on the main wing, they'd have been able to plan it properly with tools, weapons. Well, what happened next? Killed. What happened next was even worse, in my opinion. Mm. But when they came in my cell, one of them had a pen like that. Mm. You know, they hold a pen like that. Yeah. So I thought I'm gonna have to fight for my life here. Like this is serious. But I was I was so disorientated by being punched on the nose. It just, I was, I was in cloud cuckoo land for a good 20 seconds. Um, thankfully, they ran out. Uh, but the trial, no charges, no prosecution, nothing. Okay, so next thing they do is they take me from the induction wing, which is like, you know, spur A, and they take me around the corner and put me on spur B. So I'm on there, and about eight white fellas come up to me. Oh, no, yeah, because I'd been all over the TV. They'd been watching me on TV, yeah. and they knew I was coming to that prison. So I, this was like a few days into it. And they said, don't worry, we've got your back, all this kind of stuff. Then the, the prison officers came in and put me in my new cell. So I'm starting to arrange it and clean it and all this. But the, they'd locked the door after me. And then one of these guys who expressed support said he'd look after me in there. He came down and said, listen, Paul, I've got to tell you, the Muslim lifers, two, two landings above, they're up there and they're talking about coming down and killing you. So I was like, mm, what do I do here? Do I just, just get stuck in or... So yeah, because life as well. Yeah, they've got nothing to lose. Nothing so I thought, do you know what, just, tell the, just see what happens, tell the prison officers. So I went and told the prison officers. I didn't know who they are, I wasn't snitching, so I didn't know who they are. I said, I've been told by someone in here who said they're going to watch my back. So the Muslim lifers up there are plotting, already plot, plotting who's going to kill me. Like they, they wanted to go for me, they was going to, they was going to do something. So what they did was they locked me down and said, we'll be back. Then, so I'm sitting in the cell and I, I hear banging on the door. So I've got up, went over to it. You know, you've got the little slits. Yeah, yeah. There's like four Muslims there. Four Muslims. Uh, yeah, why you lock the door, bro? All this. Are you cowardly? I said, I didn't lock the door. Open the door right now. Mm. See what happens. Uh, you know, bravado. Um, but then they all walked oh, off. I know all these feelings, man. We, I know. You've been in that prison. It's not good, bro. It's like, as I thought, I've got Muslim lifers upstairs. They've just come to my door. I've got a few boys there who've come up to me and said, you know, a, we support you. Surprised we, by that. We support you. We're going to watch your back. But the, the, what, uh, a team of prison officers, they locked down the unit. 
they locked down the whole spur. And then they came in my cell and said, get your stuff ready, we're going somewhere else. I said, oh, really good, put me they somewhere. They must have known this was going to happen. That's, of course why, they did. Why, why let it they happen on the first night? Yeah. yeah, they've done it deliberately. They know what's going to happen. It's like you, you, I've read in your book that they yeah. put you in a room with, them. with a bunch of Muslims. What did they think was going to happen? And then lock the door. So, you know, uh, next thing you know, they've taken me out, they've taken me off this spur, they've, they've walked me like three miles to the other end of the prison. I said, where the hell are we going? You're going to the block. So where you go for punishment. They've put me on the block no. for being attacked. Yeah. The, but the block is punishment. They're the most disgusting, run-down, horrible cells. There's no radio, there's no TV, there's nothing. Mm. It's a punishment I've cell. So I've gone in there and it stinks. There's bits of food everywhere. There's no TV. There's, there's nothing. Uh, they left me in there. It's rock hard. The bed's like a mat, isn't it? Yeah. It's not like a bed. It's like the, 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 police, like station. the police station cells. A blue yeah. mat. This, like, this. It's like the I end up getting bruised. Concrete. Yeah, I end up yeah. getting bruised in all my, my side, so I couldn't lay on that side. Because I, I was in there for five months in, that, in, in the block. Yeah. Five months, bro. So it's, it's a lump of concrete with a, a little blue mattress on top. Yeah. So that was, that was hard, sleeping on there. It's not comfortable. I, 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 I stayed shoulders. in there for a week with nothing. Now that really pushed my endurance to the limit. Mm. A week of four walls. I mean, that is, that is, that is real hard work. Mm. That is real hard going. It doesn't sound hard work. I try explaining it to someone. Go and lock yourself in your bedroom and don't come out. And you, that's a nice bedroom, yeah? Yeah. Nice bedroom, nice comfort. Just go and do that for a month. See how you go on. Yeah. You'll come out and you, 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 you lost your sanity. I mean, you, it, it, is, it is a punishment. Well, see why they use it in jail as a punishment.